All right, welcome to part two. Um, this is the completed build that you are about to see. And real quick, I'm gonna just go over what kind of, sort of stuff I'm using. So I'm using Lumineer um, 2206, 2350 kV motors. I'm using uh, some UBAD uh, 30 amp ESCs. I picked up these Racecraft uh, props um, from Ready to Fly Quads and I really like the look of them. I haven't been able to test this very much just because I just got this built. Anyway, I am using a uh, HS1177 cam a PV camera, um, a uh, uh, Lumineer Pro 200 milliwatt video transmitter, a Amway antenna, um, Spectrum satellite receiver, the DSMX uh, race version. It has diversity. Um, I am using the uh, SPF3. SP Racing F3 um, and I'm also picking up a Lux just to see how they perform together or in uh, in comparison but anyway I think that's about it for the uh, parts just did a really quick overview of what I'm using nothing too in depth and I guess let us get into the actual build so first things first I guess let's unscrew this little top plate here just so it'll be easier to build and I'm probably going to take the screws out and standoffs on the bottom as well so it won't be as difficult to build um, while we are putting all these parts together. So first off, let's start by mounting the motors to the frame itself. So first, I'm just gonna put two in like I usually do. So I'll put them on the outside that goes down the frame like that. So first one, I'll just screw in a little bit. Like, let's get it lined up here like that. I'll just screw it down so it's a little bit loose so I can get the other screw in now you can use all four screws if you want but I'm just using two and it, I think it gave a perfect amount for using two on everything um, with this set they might have given the extra screws for that purpose I'm not exactly sure um, but this is what I'm using it for because it kind of matches the theme a little bit so now that they're down pretty uh, pretty it's down uh, I'm just going to screw them in. I don't usually use Loctite, but you can if you want. I've never had a problem um, with them coming out or anything. As long as you just screw them down pretty tight. Uh, just don't really strip them. I, what I usually do is I take the outside, and when I can't push it or it snaps out like that, I know that it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So there's one motor done. I guess let's do all of the rest. All right, so that is all of them done. That took a little bit of time, um, but that is okay. So um, also with the kit, they gave some foam and I already cut it up here. Uh, there's gonna be some foam here for your battery um, to, to protect it a little bit from the carbon fiber. And then there's also going to be some foam here to go under the ESCs. So since I've already cut it, I'm just gonna take some skinny pieces of foam. This was included in the kit if I have not already said that. But yeah, just take some skinny pieces of foam see um like so i'm gonna cut this one up a tiny bit more there you go so now that that is all cut up i'm gonna put that right there put that to the side and right where the escs are going to be what i usually like to do is put a little bit of foam under it 
Now that what that does is it just kind of protects the ESC from any uh, you know if you have any hard impacts it doesn't knock any components off when it's uh, there. So usually I just put it where about where I think. Sometimes I'll even do that do this before or after I put on the ESCs. But today I'm just gonna do it before. If I have to move it, it's all good. Um, I will be taping the ESCs down so it won't be too big of a problem if I mess this up and the adhesive doesn't stick very well afterwards. But yeah, so now we're gonna fire up our soldering iron. I got this one from Banggood for Christmas last year. Uh, it's just electric, has a little bit of a dis it's display right there and it's really nice, gets up to 400 degrees Celsius, which is really nice for quick and easy things like uh, let's say you're soldering onto your uh, flight controller here then you just get in and out really quickly you don't have to heat up the whole board fast and then I'm also using a little bit of foam here just to wipe off my soldering iron and I'm going to go get that wet real quick so I'll be right back so now that I got that wet I'm firing up my soldering iron here real quick and uh, let's get my solder right here um, just using some leaded solder you know, just standard stuff you can buy at your hardware store. So what I'd like to do in order to kind of make the soldering iron rudder ready is I'll wipe it off on my thing, just like that. And then uh, I'll just get a little bit of solder on there just to kind of get it so it, it heats up the uh, component a lot faster. So what I figured out with these ESCs um, is that the clockwise or counterclockwise go uh, they have reversed wires so that means what that means is see how the wires are straight on like this with counterclockwise motors one two of these wires will be switched to reverse it in the opposite direction that it is going currently so on this on counterclockwise which would be this one and this one, remember that the motors spin towards the frame, like so. So they spin like this and like this. So they spin towards the middle of the frame. That's how I always remember it. So um, counterclockwise motors right here, these two right here, will have reverse directions. So let me show you what that is. So one, first thing I'm gonna do is just get one wire on. I'm gonna do this outside left one so let me just flip it over real quick get it on there just like that so i got a nice little solder joint um not the best one let me wipe this off a little bit you don't want to get too much solder on there at the beginning or else it's going to kind of flood your uh your component that you're doing with solder and that is never good so right there just kind of get it in there get it on there fast and quick so now that I've got that one wire on there, I will take this outside wire and actually solder it to the middle like that. And then I'll take this middle wire and solder it to the outside. I don't know if you guys can see this very well. Sorry, it's kind of hard building in front of the camera. Um, but anyway, yeah, just like that. And that is one ESC down. So now this one, I'm just gonna solder it straight to it. So. Wipe off my soldering iron a little bit. Get it nice and clean. I usually kind of like, I have this little uh, round right here, or um, holster, I guess, for it. And I just kind of wipe it off on there. And then I'll just solder it straight too. So this one, um, just like this. Yep, there you go. Get a second to melt. And then I'll do it, the two outside ones and then the middle one. It's just like that. And then the middle one, just like that. So now that is straight soldered and that is going to spin clockwise and these are your clockwise motors. Um, so yeah, that is for counter, counterclockwise and clockwise. So I guess let's do the other two.
that is it for uh, for those the ESCs soldering to the motors. May not be the prettiest job, but it works. And um, make sure to try not to get any solder on the actual circuit board itself, or you could run into quite a bit of problems. So, like I said, I'm just gonna put those like that. You know, under it. That one's fine. That one should be good. And this one can move a little bit forward. So, like. Sorry if you can't see this very well, like that. So, this should be pretty good. So now, it's time to move on to putting on the uh, power distribution board. So I'm gonna screw off these little things. This one's being a little bit difficult. There you go. I didn't tighten these very hard because I knew I'd be taking them off later. So that is why they are that um so now I'm just going to take my power distribution board it doesn't matter which orientation you have it in um, I like to just you know put it on there wherever I fit is right and then I have these little standoffs right here and they are some really old standoffs I had these I believe in my first quad ever so they are not going to be the best looking but they work really well when I'm trying to mount stuff so what I do is I'm just screwing them in to where the uh, bottom or the top is screwing down into the other standoffs. So that means I can just put my flight board on top, screw it in, and I am good to go. And definitely check your solder joints on here. Make sure there's not any one strand of wire or anything hanging off there because that could mess you up uh, and knock you out of the sky. I've had that happen before. So I'm just gonna keep Screwing this last one down, and we should be good to go. So now, when it comes to this, I have already cut these wires length, like I said. I've had this one pre-built, not pre-built, but I've built a one like this before. So these wires are pretty close to where they're gonna be need cut. And I always run my longer wires, since the positive is over here and the negative is over here. I like to run my, uh, my longer wires under the frame so it doesn't give that clustered look or not under the frame under the power distribution board just so it gives a kind of cleaner look to it all and uh, things like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tin these wires so I'm gonna pull off a little bit and the nice thing about these new wires that have been coming out lately is that they are uh, they're nice silicone coverings so they they're just easy to pull off and you don't have any troubles so right there, and also if you want to, you can just put something underneath it, like a tool. Just kind of raise it up a little bit, get an easier tending job. Or people have something like, let's see if I can find it, this, where it's just kind of a helping hand, and you can also use that, which I think I'm going to do. The only problem about this, is this was meant to go on my uh, little sol solder holster, soldering iron holster, but. Um, I took it off there because you know I felt it was more convenient like this um, but that means it moves around a little bit anyway so you're just gonna want to heat this wire up a little bit and then just get some solder right on there and just take it right off like that so I'm gonna wipe my soldering iron off and you see how that wire has a little bit of excess solder just coming on there so what I do usually I'll just cut that little tip off just so there's not too much solder on there. Just cut the little tip off and take your extra ones and put it in the trash so you don't cause any issues later. Um, so you just kind of, I like to keep things tidy and just clean up after myself. So I'm going to do that for the black wire as well and all other wires on this uh, power distribution. I'm, I mean ESCs. I just cannot speak today. Alright, so I am done with that. Just gonna kind of pick up my scraps once again, keep the place tidy. 
I forgot to mention the reason behind tenning is just that so it has a little bit of a stronger bond towards the uh, other solder on the other end you're soldering you do not want a cold solder joint that is when uh, your wires do not uh, completely solder together and uh, it can come off pretty easily so what I'm gonna do since this side is positive and this side is negative this side is negative um, which I think I messed up on this ESC I should probably switch these two because since I pre-cut the wires this one's going to be the right length to reach the negative side all the way over here and this one's gonna be the right length to reach I mean this one's gonna be the right length to reach the positive side all the way over here so I'm going to just unsolder that real quickly and I'll get back to it all right now that that is done uh, we can start kind of soldering these wires to the power distribution board itself so I'm just going to run these longer wires under here like so just kind of get them up there and this one And these are the signal wires, just ignore those for a moment. Get these under here, get those there. Um, so yes, yeah, do that for all of them. It's just gonna go right here. And then this one is going to go. Sorry if this, some of this is out of shot. Um, that was kind of hard. To do this. This is my first time building something in shot, so uh, usually I'm just I'm all over the place. And that is your example of a cold solder joint right there. I need to add a little bit more solder. It just came off just like that. So add a bit more solder there. Wipe your soldering iron off. So yeah, that just came off and it was not supposed to. So I'm just gonna solder it down. Like that. Get nice and soldered in there. And this is a little bit of solder that is unnecessary. Right there. So that should be a lot better. I'm just going to check all the other ESC wires for that same issue. Nope, looks like it's just that one. So that's a good sign. Um, so yeah, just kind of running them under here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave a little bit of slack under there and just solder it directly to there and I can pull it pull it out a little bit more if I need be but if need be but I don't think I will be a need to I might want to get rid of some of that slack because that is quite a bit of slack I usually leave about five millimeters five to ten millimeters slack maybe seven or so you know just to be safe in case you need it um, anyway, let me get Thinning it. Wipe the iron off. Okay. So now that I have that under there, make sure this is negative that you are soldering on into. And not positive, because if that happens, then your ESCs will not like you. And they will decide to smoke which is bad for you so yeah, don't let that happen uh, I'm going to put a little bit more um, solder on this power distribution board just so I can get a good base for all these uh, wires here just kind of feed it in there the nice thing about that I like about these power distribution boards is that one side is negative one side is positive so you don't really have to worry about them touching at all unlike if all of them where they're just uh, random, or not random, but like side by side, like some power distribution boards have. So, just gonna do that. Kind of hold it down, maybe use some pliers, because it does get fairly hot when you're doing that. So, I'm just gonna, as a little bit of cardboard from earlier, I don't know when I was doing, honestly, but just gonna hold it down right there and solder it directly to the edge, like that. I'm gonna put a little bit more solder on it just to make sure we don't have any cold solder joints. Just like that, there you go. It's plenty of solder. And it should just kinda sink right in. 
and boom that's our first wire soldered and then with this side it's pretty much the same deal you just solder it up maybe cut some slack I might have uh, gave a little bit too much slack here but that is okay too much slack is not going to be an issue it's not enough slack that is an issue so just kind of cut it all up this turn it and if this is out of shot I extremely apologize for that um, but anyway uh, yeah so sorry I was just making sure it was in fact in shot a little bit um, so I'm just gonna solder that right there no problem goes down easily this is why you want a hot soldering iron so that you can do things like that pretty quickly I'm actually gonna desolder that that wasn't very good and sometimes like that solder will take a little bit of time to uh, to harden again because of how much you've been heating it up like that board is pretty hot and I'm gonna let that cool down for just a second maybe blow on it just because I don't want all those components sliding around on there that would not be very good for me um, there we go just like that that looks pretty good in my eyes um, so yeah, I'm just going to do that for like each and every one of the uh, ESCs and I will get back to you on how that goes. Alright, those are all those ESCs done and they're all soldered to this power distribution board. Let's just make sure, so this black one, black one, black one, negative, black one, negative, black one, negative, and then all positives and then Last but not least, I have my XT60 connector that is, I already pre-soldered it. I'm actually going to replace, oh no, well that's bad. I guess I'll have to re-solder it all now. Um, let's just do this. So I guess I'll, guys, I'll show you guys how to solder an XT60. So here are my two wires that I'm going to be using. I think I'm going to be using almost the full length of it maybe cut off around here ish go and then I'm going to cut off a tiny bit here so that solder I can get some new good solder on there it's just like that throw all that away sometimes I keep my wires sometimes I throw them away it just depends on what I'm feeling I guess so set this aside Real quick. So here's my XT60 connector. I'm going to take these off. Use the other helping hand. Kind of take it, turn it. So kind of twist the wires and turn it a little bit. So just like that. So nice amount of solder on there. And then do the same with this black wire. That twist it around a little bit and do that. So you want to get a lot of solder on here just so you can have a good solder joint uh, when it comes to XC60 connector. So that side is plus the flat side. So what I'm gonna do is gonna hold this wire with some pliers it gets very very hot um, then I'm going to what you're going to want to do is you're going to put a lot of solder on this connector right here so just kind of heat this up what I like to do is heat it up in the middle and then just force a bunch of solder in there same with right here just heat that up nice and good and then just force a bunch of solder into there and now that you have a bunch of solder in there what you're going to do like I said just put a lot of uh, flat side is positive just gonna kind of heat that all up and push it down in there and wait for it to cool down like that and there is one wire that's how easy it is um, like UAV future said 
I too spend a lot of time trying to get a uh, XG60 connector on. So uh, just kind of show you guys what it's, how it's done um, really quickly and easily without a lot of hassle. So I'm gonna do the same like this. So just heat this up, like that, put it in there. Sometimes I blow on it, sometimes I don't. And do that a little bit better. Just like that. So then what I usually do, just take some heat shrink. I have this assorted set of heat shrink. Um, then I just take this, cut it down, maybe about uh, 20 millimeters or so. I don't know, that's probably a little less than 20. And then what I do is I ha usually have a, uh, a lighter around here, so I'll go get that in a second. Let's do that. Put this back. This over here. And then I just slide that over. And as you can see, it kind of has already just because of how hot that got. So, let's take my lighter that I have conveniently placed down here. And I'm just gonna heat that up a little bit. Just like that. And if you want, you can press the ends together to make it a little bit better seal, just like that. And that is your completed XC60 connector. You might wanna give that time to uh, cool down. Sorry, there's a bunch of stuff all over my little workstation now. But, um, yeah. So, I guess now, let's move on to uh, soldering that really quickly onto our uh, uh, little, not little, but just power distribution board. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this right here, just like that. And I am going to take this off so I can begin tending them and then putting them on the power distribution board. So, uh, and in that little cut just then, um, I actually did some stuff and it took about two hours so I need to warm my soldering iron back up and I will be right back. So now that the soldering iron is warmed up, sorry about that, um, you can just, you know, just put a little bit of solder in there, and then after that, just force it in there, and you should be good to go. Right there, I'm just trying to put some solder in there, and force it in like that. Get it nice and hot, nice and solder filled, like that. So now, so I'm just take these wires out. As you can see, and uh, this is the back of the frame right here, so we're just going to solder directly to that right there. So make sure this is plus, this is minus. So this is plus, red is, red is plus, negative is minus, or black is negative always. Um, so you know, just kind of work it in there, just like that. That's nice and strong, and then work this one. And here, about the same spot, so you have the same lead on both ends, just like that. Let that cool down, and boom, there you go. There's your XT60 lead right there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to plug it in. And this is the plug-in of death. This is the first time you see if anything powers up, or it all goes bye-bye. So just making sure, check all my power leads. Got all that going for me. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit more solder right there. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think we're all good on this. So let me go get a battery, and we'll see how it goes. Now you can never be too safe when it comes to, uh, you know, doing all this. So just make sure everything is okay because you do not want to ruin any of this. So if it makes a beeping sound, we're good. Woo! It indeed did. 
No magic smoke come out. You want to check and make sure all the motors are doing it. So I'm plug it in a few times, make sure everything is a okay. And it looks like it in fact is. So what I usually like to do is I like to put the video transmitter and camera on after I'm done and then finish it off with the fly controller. So here's just a little contraption I made. Um, not contraption per se, but uh, since both of the camera and the video transmitter can take anywhere from 5 to uh, 27 volts, I just plug it straight into my power distribution board. So what I do, I just bring those leads right off of there. Then I have the signal wire for the video, and then I just bring these leads right off there. No need for any other wires, really. So I'm going to get soldering on that. So let's see. This part goes to my video transmitter. So it's gonna go back here. And this part goes to my camera. So it's gonna go up here. You know, kind of self-explanatory stuff like that. So I'm just gonna solder this straight to there. Yep, there we go. Solder this straight here. Oops. Sorry if my hand's in the way a lot. It's kind of hard to do this in frame all the time. So there you go, that's on there. Nice and good. And let's do the video transmitter side of things. And there you go. So that's on there. Nice and good. And then those just go right here in there like that. So make sure your power lines up with your power on there. And then right here goes just like that. So it's just gonna go right there and make I sometimes twist these just so it's a little bit cleaner and it kind of looks better so um so yeah that's basically the uh, video transmitter and the camera um, anyway so I'm just gonna unplug that just so I do not forget and like that so next off I'm going to actually mount the camera so I'm just gonna bring it out like that and I'm gonna be using these little M2 uh, little screws that go into the bottom of the camera just like that so two of those and then I don't actually have any uh, M2 lock nuts um, or anything like that so I'm just using little brass um, I don't know how to describe them I'll show you in a second after I get this so, right, here we go all right and then I just usually fold that back so the screws do not come out so um, I don't know if you can see this. I'm just using these little things that screw into the bottom there. And if you really get them tight enough, they will not tend to move around too much. So I'm just going to put that. And I usually put it in the last hole there on the bottom. So it just kind of um, it protects the camera a little bit more when you crash it. Just to kind of hold the, uh, the... I don't know if you can see that very well, but just kind of hold the screw down so I can screw the actual stuff in. But, I don't know. Came out. Just so I can screw the actual brass little, I don't know even what you call them, standoffs, maybe? Anyway, so you're just gonna, just gonna hold that right there. Take the little brass thing. And, oh, being difficult, like always. If you can't see that, this, I'm very sorry. All right, there we go. And that should stay nice and tight. I just take a pair of pliers. And you don't really have to hold the other side, I feel. It just kind of goes in there pretty nicely. Just like that. And it is pretty tight. Even with one screw, that is not going anywhere. So, uh, at this point, I think it's time to uh, tape the uh, ESCs down. So I'm just going to use some... Uh, electrical tape so just kind of tape it in the middle i do not actually have any heat shrink for these escs but if you do have heat shrink feel free to put it on and i know it's a little late to say it now but uh definitely put it on before the wires go on the uh, actual um esc or else you cannot put it on so that is basically done and now it's a time to move on to the fun part um, as you can see, I'm not saying that with the most confidence because it's not very fun. Um, so, just like that, I'm going to screw my nylon screws in there. Okay. 
All right, and this one actually doesn't screw down. I don't know if you can see, but that was like part of another nylon standoff, and I just had to cut it down so it didn't really screw down that easily. So I realized that um, I should probably solder a little bit to my flight controller, like my receiver outputs, so I don't have to mess with them later. I don't have to worry about it. So I found this picture, and th those are the ports for my receiver that you solder to. So just get that port real quick, right there. Wipe it off. And that's 3.3 volts right here. And then RX is right here. All right, so those are the three holes you are going to have to uh, solder to. So the grayish one, that is going to be the uh, RX, that is going to be your receiving side. The black one, as always, is going to be your negative. So right here, and with the boards, you just want to get in and out as quickly as possible. And then with the actual positive, you're going to solder directly to that. All right, and I'm actually gonna re-solder these so they're a little bit closer to the actual board. The board is a little bit warm, but not too hot. So I think I did an okay job right there. So there's a little stray wire right there. I'm just gonna cut that off just so it doesn't cause any problems later down the road. Sorry if you can't see that. Yeah, I really do apologize if you can't see some of this stuff that I'm doing. Um, it's kind of hard to get all of it in the shot and stuff like that. So back to here. Um, this is going to be pointed like that. So and my receiver is going to be right back there. So I'm going to weave that through. And there we go. So, that. Just kind of gets a little bit of stress relief right there. And just do a little bit more. And boom, there we go. So that is that out of the way, so now can actually mount the things so you saw that so no need to show you again also one little thing I forgot to do was actually put in my BEC which kind of sucks because now I have to take this off right there so and I'm gonna slide it right under here just like that boom got that and then these are the wires that you would just plug in directly to your flight controller because it is 5 volt BEC. So now that that is a little better, we can uh, move on to actually getting some soldering done on this. So, um, so it is going to go one, two, three, four. For you, that is going to be one, two, three, four. So since this is going to be one, I don't really have to do much in terms of lengthening the wire. So all I'm going to do is just tin it. And yes, I am soldering directly to the fly controller I find it's a lot easier and it saves a lot of space for you know other activities things you'd want to do with your new fly controller I don't know what I'm saying anymore so it's good um, and then I'm just gonna tin all the pads that I do need for this I need one one two three four and then I'm gonna use eight for powering um, my uh, flight controller through the five volts, and then I'm also going to do the grounds. One, two, three, four. Awesome. So we got those, making sure it wasn't too hot. 
So now I'm just going to solder the signal directly to that. It's cutting a little close with this length of the wire, but I think it'll be fine. So that is one motor done, and then I will show you how to like reach this one from uh, here to there, which I think is going to be pretty important. But first, I'm actually going to solder on these wires right here. So, and I know what you might be thinking if you saw the uh, power distribution board. The BEC for five volts does not actually work on that power distribution board. So uh, that's why I'm not using it, and that's why I'm using that other thing. So yes, technically this could be a little bit lighter, but with the thrust I'm getting with this motor and ESC combination, combination, I don't think it is going to be too much of an issue if I have 10 extra little grams. So solder the negative, and you kind of want to get these as far away as possible just so nothing bad happens and your quad explodes so yeah I don't know if that might have been a little bit exaggerated but you never know what can happen with these things one day you're flying at the park and the next day they are cutting up your hand just like that so you know you're a little bit unpredictable sometimes so anyway just got that right there yeah. why is in here somewhere it's a little bit of a bad solder job, I don't know. It's whatever though. So um, I'm actually going to go get a battery real quick and I will be right back just to try to see if it does get them on. Alright, so just checking to make sure everything is okay. Soldering, make sure that nothing is poking up in there. And I guess let's plug her in. Another moment of truth. There we go. And that motor did, in fact, come on, meaning that it did, that it is connected to the flight controller right there. So that is a very, very good sign. Now, we are on to motor two. And uh, so, it does kind of the same thing, except I'm going to have to lengthen these wires. I'm actually going to push this uh, the, re the receiver back in there. So just take this right here. Boom. Just back there. Like that is usually how I have my receiver. 
I don't think that's going in there, especially when I put on the standoffs. So, one, two, two is soldered to two, um, and then three, which is right here. So for me, that's going to be right here. All right, now that that is done, I'm going to start screwing in these standoffs because we are pretty much done with this build. And for me, that was one of the quickest builds that I've ever had. Um, and I don't know why, it should have been longer. It was in front of the camera, but it was pretty quick. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, I'm just gonna do this, screw in all the standoffs like so. Sorry as well if this video is fairly lengthy. I'm kinda trying my best to cut out all the stuff and things like that. <sighs> Sorry, I'm wiping off the camera. But you know, things get lengthy. I don't know how else to say it. Anyway, so do this. Like that. Plug that in. That's just gonna go right back here. Since this has a power switch, I'm gonna have to um Keep the bottom kind of open so I can get access to that power switch. I think it's a little too short. Alright, got that all figured out so it's all good now. I just had to lengthen the wires right here. It took a little bit of time, but I guess it paid off. So we are pretty much ready to put this thing together. Just got the top plate right here, and I'm just going to do that. Fits right there and then I'm going to use a zip tie and uh, it goes around right about here it doesn't really matter where it's just personal personal preference I can't speak ever I'm gonna do it right there so it kind of protects the uh, SMA I don't know if you guys can see that or not if you can't I apologize So, got that right there. So that works right there. And I'm gonna actually add another one. So now that I have that, I'm gonna put one more zip tie just to be safe. Cause you can never be too safe when it comes to crashing. Like I tend to do quite often. So I'm just gonna put one right around here. Just kind of protect the SMA connector. Because those do tend to uh, come off sometimes, just like that. And not make it too tight so it doesn't break the SMA connector. So just like that, right there. And screw this in. Anyway, I think that's about it for the, uh, the storm. I put this top on wrong, so it reads m m more. Uh, I don't know what that reads, but I put it on wrong. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for this build video, which is surprising. I feel like I should do more. Um, anyway, I think I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching if you are still here. I don't know if anyone will be. Um, but anyway, if you walk, watch till the end, let me know, I guess. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching again, and I will see you, um, in the next video, probably a flight of this thing, or a troubleshoot of this thing. Not really sure how it's gonna go, but I'll see you then.